Tell Me About It is brought to you by Extreme Health Club. Ben Hayes, KY Sports TV. Also, uh, in the background over to the left is James Brown, 104 and score. We're on Glasgow Electric Plant Board, Channel 6, the, the local channel on Tell Me About It. And today we have uh, two seniors from the Coverna High School basketball team, Bo Barker and Desmond Rowlett. Um, kind of a special segment. These guys won the uh, Class A fifth regional tournament and are about to travel up to Corbin to play in the Class A state. Um, Desmond, tell me what kind of feeling you had when you guys finally were able to win the, the region to go to Class A. Very excited. Uh, something I never experienced before, so I was very excited when we won. Get to celebrate with my team. All right, Bo, how, how did you, uh, this your second year uh, at Caverna, um, I know that, that I don't think you've had the experience of playing at the Class A state either. What are some of the feelings that you had? Uh, very exciting. Uh, I was kind of emotional when we won. Just, uh, you know, last year we came up short, mm -hmm. and that really hurt to see a different team being able to celebrate. So it's very surreal in a way. I'm very excited. Okay, you guys beat Greene County, who had um, beat you in the previous game by 10. Uh, you came out. Pretty pretty good game in the first half, but in the second half, um, you guys pretty much did what you wanted to do, um, and and that doesn't count on the district record side. But how you know what was going through your head when you realized that you could beat Green County? I don't know. Who are you, Bo? I think. You know, once we realize that we can beat them, we can also win the district. Mm -hmm. I think that we're one of the better teams in the district, and I think we have a really good chance okay. to win the district. LaRue County has, um, they've improved, you mm -hmm. know, in the second part of the season. Hart County, I think, is around 500, maybe a little little better. Um, so you guys definitely have the momentum going. Um, going up to Corbin, you're going to face Pikeville. Um, a traditional powerhouse in Eastern Kentucky. Um, I know they've got a they've got a big kid, yeah. and it seems like the last eight seasons they've had a, a kid six eight or better. Um, how do you think you're gonna you guys are gonna face up with Pikeville? I think we'll match up really well. Um, I think we have a really special team to compete to go and compete in the All A. I think we're ready. Okay, um, you know everybody talks about Jalen um, and you know they, they should talk about Jalen. Jalen has um, against the game the game against Green County is probably the best facilitated game I've seen him play. Uh, he didn't force shots. Um, he, he didn't show emotions. Got the ball where it needed to be and when he needed to score he scored. Um, and Dez I know you didn't have as good of a shooting night. Actually neither one of you guys had the shots to fall that you want it to fall, but how much better do you guys think you are when Jalen's game is on? I think we're pretty good. He helps the team a lot, getting the ball to the twins, passing it around, oh, going up the floor. He does, he's a really good point guard, and helps us, you know, move the ball around, so. I think he's a very special player. When he's on the floor, we're just so much better. You know, I really think he's the best guard in the region by far, but he really makes us improve as a team. Yeah, right. Okay, you guys, this time, um, a lot of people didn't realize Caverna won 19 games last year. Um, so it's not like it's a surprise that you guys are winning. I think there's probably four games that, that sticks out to me that I think you should have won. Um, but still, even with, with those four slip-ups, you guys are still sitting, I think, fifth in the region behind a really good Elizabethtown, North Harden, and the Dare County team. Um, and LaRue has actually, they're actually moving LaRue up now. You guys did beat LaRue. Um, I think this is a year that the region is going to be wide open. Um, how do you how do you foresee yourself? If, if you know, the key to, to the regional tournament is just trying to get that one seed in the district so that you play a 
you know, a two seed in the in the district that the, the cross district that you're going to play. How do you guys think that you could match up against, you know, an Elizabeth Town that's that's got a guy seven foot, another kid, his brother six six. Um, we don't have that much height at Caverna. Um, I think Russell six six four six five. How do you think that that you guys would match up with size like that? I think we'll match up really well. Just a simple fact that we have heart and two twins. Strong people don't really realize like how much they do on the court. Do a lot. I think they're so important, and special to this team. But I think we can match up with anybody in the region. Okay, now let's. Um, I know I've kind of been everywhere for a second, but I just wanted to get back. You know, talking about the the top teams in our region. Um, <clears throat> in this Class A state tournament, there's three teams ranked in the top 20 in the state. So ultimately, your goal would be to want to get to the finals, to play, I'm sure it's going to be Lyon mm -hmm. County, who is, is, is sitting at number two in the state right now. So if, if, if you guys could go up and, and, and beat Pikeville, then you'll play the winner of Evangel, Evangel and Kentucky Country Day. Uh, I know... Evangel's leading scores out, I think, for the season. Um, how do you think that you guys will match up against those upper tier teams? We've got to come out hard and ready to play. I think we can do it. I think we can beat teams like that. We just got to play together, work as a team, make shots, play good defense like we've been doing, like against Green County, and just come out ready to play, play hard. Exactly what he said. Uh come out really strong. You know, I feel like the four or five games that we've lost this year, we just had really bad starts. Really so bad I starts. think if we come out strong, no matter who we're playing against, I feel like we have a really good chance of winning. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to bring on um, the head coach, Steve Barker, and point guard, Jalen Crane. Um, and I'm sure James is going to talk to Jalen about his um, first Division One offer, which is, is a really big deal uh, as a sophomore. Um, so thank you guys for coming on, and good luck, and we'll be back in just a minute. Thank you. Extreme Fitness has doubled in size. Now with over 8,000 square feet of co-ed weights and an upgraded 90-degree sailing therapy pool. The Extreme Fitness Campus also holds the exclusive Extreme Fitness for Women Complex and Extreme Blend Smoothie Bar. You have to experience the variety of classes to realize the impact they have on their clients. Personal training is with the best in the business and is available and tailored to fit individuals. So start your journey today at Extreme Fitness and Health Club. Welcome back to Tell Me About It. I'm James Brown here on Glasgow EPB Channel 6, local channel. We will be talking to Caverna basketball coach Steve Barker and point guard Jalen Crane. Uh, hopefully you caught the first segment of this with Trevent Hayes and uh, Desmond Rowlett, Bo Barker, the two seniors uh, talking to Trevent about playing in the All-A. Uh, as you're watching this, the Colonels will be playing uh, because the show airs at 6 p.m. every Thursday night. They're, Supposed to tip off at 7 p.m. our time at the Corbin Arena, but there's a whole day of games ahead of them, so it may be a little later like it usually is over there in that tournament. Uh, Jalen, Trevitt asked the two seniors about winning that All-A Regional for the first time. Now, you, I think, you did you start playing when you were in the eighth grade, seventh grade maybe seventh grade. even on the, on the varsity? So you've kind of experienced that All-A a few times, even though you're only a sophomore, but so. for you, in that game, what were you thinking at the end of it when you guys won it? I was excited because then, like, we get to do something we never did as a team. Now, it's been 20 years since Caverna has been to the All-A. The last time they had guys like Boris Siakam who went on and played at WKU. Uh, and you have a Division One offer from uh, what? Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State. I was trying to remember where Ray Harper was now because I knew it was I knew it was Ray Harper. Now, did, did you do you did you know who Ray Harper was? Like, had coached at WKU and that kind of stuff before yes, you talked to him. I know who he was. How'd you end up uh, making that connection? Uh, I think he come and watch me play, and then that's how I met him in person. Okay, so last year, like when, during your freshman year, gotcha. Uh, how does it feel to get that first offer? Feels good. Is that how many more would you like to have? A lot. <laughs> is it is that like your goal is to play college basketball? Yes, sir. 
when, when did that become your goal in life? Freshman year. Is that right? So could maybe once people were looking at Meek and you were like, oh, okay, so I have uh, I have this opportunity too? So, Coach Parker, what is it? Uh, you've kind of been fortunate since you got to Governor. You've had some pretty good players here uh, and still got more coming back because I think despite the two seniors, you have about six or seven sophomores on the roster? Yes. Um, you know, when I took the job, I had no idea who was here, what tradition they had. Um, and that first open gym when uh, they all showed up and I thought, we got something special here. <laughs> and so, um, you know, we were fortunate enough to win 19 games last year. And then this year, we're right now we're 12 and five with a, a great opportunity to go to the All-A and uh, win some games. And um, so we're real excited uh, to, you know, to win four games in four days. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a task, but it's preparing us for the district regional and the hopefully state of Rep Arena. So that's our goals. Now, this is not the first time you've been to the All-A. You took McLean County there a few years ago, well, yep. what, about 10 years ago? 2012, yeah. uh, we went and drew Glasgow. Yes. And it was really good Glasgow team. Yes. And um, we, it was at the Frankfurt Civic Center, the end of a beautiful place to play. I'd, we had never, I had never been in there. That's where Kentucky State plays. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then it was bumped to Eastern Kentucky for a couple of years. And then now it's at uh, the Corbin Civic Center. And I've never been to Corbin Civic Center, but they say it is beautiful. Yeah, I'm interested because it's like a multi-use facility. Yes. So it's going to be an interesting kind of environment. It is. It is. Uh, what has having been there? I mean, so you guys have to go get rooms, arrange food. You have to do all kinds of things. But you actually took a trip down to Alabama during the Christmas break and played. And did that help you kind of prepare and help your players prepare for what to expect in terms of not just the basketball, but the things away from the court going to Corbin? No doubt. Um, I scheduled that uh, post-Christmas tournament for this reason, mm -hmm. uh, to prepare these guys. You know, when you're dealing with 13, 14, 15, 16, 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds that have never stayed in a hotel, not with a group, uh, they're on their own for the first time, not with mom and dad around, um, eating out in restaurants, um, being in public, representing Caverna High School. You've got to know how to act. You've got to know how to treat people. And, and they did a great job with that in uh, Alabama. We had a, a great experience down there. A lot of them had never been to Alabama. And they got to see teams from Tennessee, Alabama there. Mm -hmm. And I think those teams enjoyed seeing somebody from Kentucky. So it has prepared us. And um, we're going to really enjoy this trip. Jalen, I mean, when you guys went down to Alabama, who, who was in charge of keeping the players in line? Because usually that's going to fall on somebody on the team, isn't it? It was me. It was it you? So, I mean, when, when you guys went down to Alabama, I mean, it's a it's a different experience, sort of like this going to Corbin. Uh, do, you, do you kind of approach it like, we've got business, this is why we're here, we're not here to go on a mission. Yeah. So, so what's your mission there in Corbin then? Win every game. You guys start off with Pikeful. Uh, have you guys done much scouting on them, Jalen? Every day. What, what have you learned about them? They feed off their big man most of the time. Mm -hmm. That's all they do. So he's like a 6'8", and then I think they have a 6'4 guy, but I don't know how much he actually plays. The 6'8 guy is really the anchor of the team, right? Yeah, the 6'4 boy is a great athlete, uh, comes off the bench, but brings energy when he comes. Um, they've got a nice point guard, and then they got a transfer kid from uh, Menifee High School, last name's Johnson, mm -hmm. uh, number two, can really, really shoot it. Yeah, I think he's like their leading scorer. Yeah. Um, he may be their second leading, the 6'8 post player, Pfizer, I think it's they pronounced Pfizer. Mm -hmm. um, he's averaging 14 and Johnson's averaging 11. Gotcha. So, so uh, it sounds like this is a task for the twins, uh, Kenyon and, and Tyson, and maybe even Russell Williams to come in there and try to match up in the paint. Is that what you guys are looking at? Well, you know, when they have they have one post, we have three or four. So we're going to, okay. you know, we've got 15, 20 fouls if we need them. <laughs> um, and if he catches the ball on the block, he's going to score. Mm -hmm. But he has a tendency to get pushed off the block. So we're going to try to take advantage of that. And with the Twins and Russ's strengths, push him off the block and have him, instead of shooting a layup, 
having forced him to shoot jump shots. Yeah. And uh, I think we'll, that'll be effective against him. Jalen, what do you think is the most important thing you need to do in the game against Pike for? Go my man. He's a shooter. Yeah. So are you you're Drew Johnson then? No, I got uh, number 22. He's okay. got number 22. The point right. guard is real solid, steady, mm -hmm. makes great decisions, um, nice player. Yeah. Um, and then if you guys win that, you guys would get Evangel Christian more than likely because they're one of the top-rated teams in the state. You guys played them last year over at Barron County on a one-day yeah. tournament. Now, they had some guys inside. I think there were seniors on that team, but the point guard was, was back, uh, probably their actual best player. Uh, what do you kind of think about those matchups, the opportunity to play not just in this tournament, but potentially play some of the best teams in the state, Jalen? Feels good to play new teams, they match up. Mm -hmm. what, Coach Parker, how do you kind of get your players ready just for that four-day challenge? Well, we've, we're, I've, I think they're more comfortable and they play harder when they're prepared. Mm -hmm. So we have, three days ago, we started putting Pikeville's, uh, all their plays in. And our second group did a great job being a scout squad. And we know exactly when they throw it to a particular player, on the left side, they're gonna do one option. On the right side, they're gonna do something else. We know it, we know they're out of bounds plays. It, now it just comes down to, you know, kind of who wants it more. Yeah. Uh, as you mentioned, this kind of sets you up. Um, the playing in this tournament, it's kind of a precursor to going and playing in the district and hopefully the region. Uh, the, the 18th district looks like the four boys teams are pretty even this year. Yes. Uh, how important then is the seeding in, in that district tournament, you think? I think it's important. I think to win the district, it gives you that little sense of pride and it kind of gives you a little boost of momentum. Mm -hmm. um, however, I've been in a lot of district tournaments and one's lose to fours all the time <laughs> yeah. and um, threes beat twos mm -hmm. and so that could be the case this year just because the district is so even yeah um, you one of the goals I guess was to get to this all-a state tournament for you this year sure. what about that district and regional tournament I want to win when 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 did you circle the calendar and say this is what I'm looking forward to when we lost last year is that right sure. so you went you went straight away and you're like I don't want to do this again uh, real quick, before we get out of here, what are what are some of your uh, thoughts about just the rest of the season after the All-A, Jalen? Going to feed it. From here on out? Mm -hmm. All right, sounds good. Coach Barker, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Jalen. This is Tell Me About It. I'm James Brown, 104thescore.com. Trevent Hayes will be back here in just a second. He's with KYSports.tv. We are on Glasgow EBB Channel 6, local channel. Extreme Fitness has doubled in size. Now with over 8,000 square feet of co-ed weights and an upgraded 90 degree sailing therapy pool. The Extreme Fitness Campus also holds the exclusive Extreme Fitness for Women Complex and Extreme Blend Smoothie Bar. You have to experience the variety of classes to realize the impact they have on their clients. Personal training is with the best in the business and is available and tailored to fit individuals. So start your journey today at Extreme Fitness and Health Club. Hey, Trevent. How's it going today? I'm James Brown. <coughs> now I'm Trevent Hayes. Yeah. We are on Tell Me About It, Glasgow EPB Channel 6, the local channel. The show airs every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Yes. You can catch it anytime on the YouTube channel. Yes. And on 104thescore.com and KYsports.tv. Roku channel. You have a Roku channel? With that we will. This show will be on the Roku channel. Well, isn't that interesting? It is. How'd it you is. do that? Well, you know, while you think we're not working, we're out here making moves, James. <laughs> we're out here making solid moves. I never said I don't think you're working. Well. I've said other things. Yeah. So, uh... What do you think the uh, Colonel's chances are in Corbin for the whole run of this All-A tournament? Now that everybody's gone? Yeah. I really they think... They won't even get to watch this because they'll, <laughs> they'll be yeah. playing a game. They'll be playing, it. yeah. <laughs> um, I think they so have the honest. potential yeah. to beat... I think they can beat Pikeville. I do too. Um, Evangel... Uh, I think Evangel will beat Kentucky Country Day. Yeah. And that will be a test. 
Um, now that point guard I learned will be back for the All A tournament. He will he, be. He had a broken hand. I think it was a broken hand. Uh, they said he could play. He'd be able to play in the All A tournament. I don't know which hand it was, whether if it's off hand or dominant hand. I don't know any of that kind of stuff. Well, we'll just have to tell her it was Garden and get that first foul on the hand and throw a shot off a little bit. Yeah. Look for the one with the bandages yeah. on it and swat that puppy. But, you know, I really think Caverna really is a dangerous team. I really do. Yeah. And and the reason I say that is if Dez Rowlett and Bo can hit a couple of threes in a short period of time, then they're not going to be able to pack that defense down. Yeah. And – you know, I, I know the kid from Pikeville 6'9", but I, I don't think he has probably faced anybody like the Twins. Yeah. Because they're going to play – they play above the rim. They rebound above the rim. Um, well, and on the box, I mean, if they're running the inside out, I mean, which is what it sounds like they were doing, we're mm -hmm. talking to Coach Barker, I mean, they're, they're both capable enough, strong enough to keep him from getting to the spot he wants to be on the box. Right. Now, I did notice that he will step out and shoot threes. Right. So, but actually, that's a benefit. I would, I would, I would prefer him to shoot threes. Yeah. I would, you know, I would really give him that shot. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, like I said, I think they can beat Pikeville. Um, I think Evangel will be a test. I know Evangel's good. Mm -hmm. They're not as good as they were last year. They no. don't have the size that they had last year. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm a fan. I'm a Jalen Crane fan. I think if Jalen plays within himself, mm -hmm. that he's going to be the best player on the floor. Um, so, you know, ultimately, I like him to see him play in the finals against uh, Travis Perry. Isn't that his name? Yeah. Travis Perry. Line Remember County. I called him Tyler Perry. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Medea. Yeah. Um, Lyon County, and, and, and for nothing else, just for the exposure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a sophomore, a, a team full of sophomores, um, getting to, to make it to that level, um, and I think they're going to go, you know, a couple of more years in mm -hmm. a row probably. But I think they could potentially, you know, play on Saturday morning. I, I think that could be a possibility. I would say I, – I, I agree with you there. And I think when you look at, um, like, a matchup with Pikeville – Caverna this year is playing defense extremely well. Great they defense. They don't give up many opportunities. The one place that they have been hurt a couple of times is when they probably play outside themselves, take some bad shots, and get turnovers. Example, the Green County game, the first game. Yeah. And they, they, they just didn't play defense. Yeah. Well, and I'd even go back to the Hart County game where they basically had like an eight-minute stretch where it seemed like they just – it wasn't the defense. They just forgot how to play offense forgot. for eight minutes. Yes. And, you know, that, that they had an opportunity to take control of that game in that eight-minute stretch, and instead they let Hart County hang around in it and eventually win it. So those are the things. But the, since they've come back from Alabama, whatever lessons they learned down there, the team bonding they got from down there, they've really played much better since then. Uh in terms of playing under control offensively and just playing stingy defense. Right. And, you know, they, they've had some other kids to step up. Russell Williams has played – had a pretty solid season. Yeah. Uh, even when he's not scoring, you know, he's rebounding the ball well and he's defending well. But I think the biggest surprise is is probably Cortavion Maxey. Yeah. Cortavion, he's not – you know, he's not burning the, the books up with minutes, but the minutes that he is in the game, he's he's actually being productive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Cortavion's probably 6'4 as well. Mm -hmm. uh, very long and athletic and, you know – I love his shot. Um, I just wish he would shoot it a little more. You know, it nothing makes me more mad than him to catch it and and you know ball fake and you mm -hmm. know and a, and a lot of the times he would he'll he'll make a crazy pass and turn it up, shoot it. Yeah, you know, just shoot the ball. Um, he's a, also a sophomore. Is that sophomore? Right? So he, you can kind of see as he's playing, he's still really kind of learning the game. Learning and 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 Cortavion's biggest problem, even back to football, is maturing. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he is, you know, at the beginning of the football season, he's very immature. Uh, but I, I spoke to his grandfather um, at one day one day this week, and I was telling him that I can see that Cortavion is starting to mature. And once he gets out of the, you know, giggly teenager, got to make everybody life stage, he's going to be a very important part of that basketball team. But not only basketball, he's going to be a huge piece for my football team. Yeah. Uh, before we get out of here, talking all, all things Caverna Colonels on Friday night, we have Glasgow hosting Barron County and a girl boy in game two. 
Yeah. Game two. Uh, and Barron swept the first round. Uh, the girls' game was pretty close. Abby Varney kind of took it over in the fourth quarter. Uh, the boys' game was the Scotties gave up five threes, mostly uncontested in the first quarter uh, against Trojans, which you cannot do with them because they will make them. And, uh, but then they played pretty good defense the rest of the game, and it, it, was, it was a closer game than the final score. Uh, I think Barron ended up winning by 12, I think, the first time around. Glasgow uh, plays pretty good defense at home. They, they uh, lost to Warren East on uh, Tuesday night, 64-62. Uh, had an opportunity to win the game and, or at least tie it and send it overtime and just fell a little bit short. So the seedings in the district are, for the district tournament are probably locked up. The Trojans are <coughs> going to be the one. Going to be the one. Glasgow and East will meet in the 2-3. Allen will be the four, be more the than four. likely. There's still a couple of games left, but that's kind of how it's shaped up. Uh, but I'm curious to see on in both games how they play because Glasgow has played better at home on the boys' side. Uh, and, you know, Barron kind of comes off of a, not their best game against Russellville on Tuesday night. But they still found a way to win. Well, Russellville's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, so, you know they, they, they escaped that one. I'm sure they probably w wish they'd played a little better in that game. And then when the, when Caverna comes back, they play Warren East Monday yeah. and Glasgow Tuesday. Yeah. So it's good for the Colonels that Glasgow don't play very well on the road. Well, I mean, they play pretty good defense everywhere. They just don't always play well offensively. Offensively. On the road. And yeah, it'll be an interesting. That'll be an interesting couple of days for the Colonels. I mean, they go in, in that All A tournament and then come back and play a good East team and a Glasgow team that's scrappy. They're just not great offensively. And so. And then I think they've got Washington County coming yeah. down. Yeah. Um, so it'll be a good test. It's it's a uh, with with all the the weather that we got and all the cancellations. It's going to be a lot of high school basketball played here in the next two weeks, trying to get these games in. Yeah, make up games before the district tournament starts. Both Baron teams played four games this week. Four right? games. They played Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and then Saturday. They're over at Monroe County. So it's a. Uh, it, it, you're right. I mean, and then you come back next week after playing in the All A, and Caverna could have what four games next four week. Four games next week. So yeah, yeah. If you love high school basketball, it's the best time of the year for it because there's a game just about every day. The second most wonderful time of the year. Uh, Christmas, the most wonderful. Right. Time. Yeah. That's... Football season is what you're really thinking. Wasn't well. It? <laughs> All right. This has been Tell Me About It. I'm James Brown, 104thescore.com, and I'm Trevin Hayes, KY Sports TV. Uh huh. And we'll be back next week.